Hello, everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. Today, we're going to take a look at something a little bit different that we uh, don't talk about enough, something that we take a lot for granted. This is a UPS. In fact, this is a cyber power UPS. Now, what's, uh, what's important about this, this is a cyber power sine wave UPS. It's not a true sine wave. It's an adaptive sine wave. So it'll work with PFC power supplies, which most all of them are now. If you look at CyberPower's website, and in part two, we'll take a look at doing the setup of this UPS. Right now, I just want to talk about the unboxing and how to set this up, but we're not going to actually set it up, but we are going to get it out and look at it. There's uh, three models on CyberPower's website in this same classification. Uh, this one we're going to show is the largest. I'm going to show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and some of the options you can you can use uh, when you're when you're working with this. The bad thing about this is they don't sell this particular model at Costco. Uh, they did, I think, at one time. Costco has the unit below this. Now, for most people that have one computer, possibly two, the unit below this will do what you want. But the way you want to buy a UPS, if possible, is try to buy it on sale. Uh, once or twice a year, you have to do the rounds. Could be B&H, could be Newegg, could be Amazon. You just have to check those different places. And there's other places. But this is about a $215 UPS. Uh, you can get it for as little as $125. Uh, $159 is a good deal. Uh, the, the model below this sells regularly for $180. So I always say bang for the buck. Get the most you can get for the money. I wouldn't buy these at regular price unless you just have to. Now, I can put three regular computers and the monitors on one of these UPSs. Uh, when we do our meeting with, with the switch and everything set up, I've got four rack mount cases two desktops, two laptops, and an Intel NUC all plugged into this. And as long as I cycle through and don't turn everything on all at once, this will do the job. This is to keep the equipment alive to protect us from any kind of power glitches. So we're going to take this out of the box and take a look at it. And it's heavy. Now, I hope you saw how I did that. I didn't lift anything out. That's the same way I do a computer case. Leverage. One end. The other end. It's got a bag on it. Let me set it down. The only reason to keep the box is if for some reason you have to send the UPS back. And uh, it's a good idea to hang on to something like that for like 30 days, just in case, before you get rid of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bag off of it. We've got tape on it, so there's a piece of tape on the top. They put all this on there to protect them. We're going to pull that off. So we'll pull the tape off the top. We've got tape here on the front rim. We'll pull all that off. Maybe some tape, nope, on the back. So as we look around, there's some tape across this bottom edge. We'll pull that off. I'll turn it around to the front. To make this a little easier, we're going to put this on the Lazy Susan so we can spin it around and show you what we're doing. We're going to spin that around the front and the side. We'll get this other tape off of here. Tape on the front. Okay, we've got this out of the box. We've taken the tape off of it. There's a label on the front that if I spin this around, talks about the operation when we get to that point. Uh, we've also got on the electrical plug, we'll pull that cap off. And we've got a cable here, cable tie we can undo here to undo this cord. Now, let's look at the back of the business end. First things first, here's a booklet that comes with it. There's no software. If we're going to plug this in and operate it from the computer, then we'll download the software from the website. Easy thing to do. When I use this with the video switch, no computer controls it. I just tap it to see what the load is, shut it down when I'm finished. Now, I have one master computer that controls three computers that I do use the software with. When we get to that point in part two, we'll talk about it. With the manual, you've got the cables you need for the USB connection. Okay, let's take a look at the connections on the back from the top down. These two are for the coax right here. 
You got two RJ11, RJ45 connections for either phone or network. You got a serial port, and up here in this corner with a little white tip on it, that's where your USB plugs in. Now as we go down the line in the center, you see this red button. That red button is a reset. If for some reason you overload it, you can reset it. But if you reset it, you need to figure out why you overloaded it. On this side, these connections are battery plus surge on this side. On this side, these are strictly surge. For demonstration purposes, I've got a gray cord. Say I have a printer. And where do I plug in the printer? I plug in the printer on the surge side only. The printer would go in on this side. That's where the printer would go. Any one of these plugs along here. The computers go on this side. The monitors would go on this side. Any sacrificial, I say sacrificial, any, any device is not necessary to getting the computer shut down correctly, I would put them on this surge side. Now, anything that has a surge protector in it, surge protectors by definition are sacrificial elements. They have a mob, a metal oxide virister. If the surge blows, great. This gets replaced because that little 25 cent part, for some reason, they don't want you to replace. So you have to get a new one. But all your equipment that's protected on the UPS side is on this side, this side right here. So you'd plug your computers in here. And as I say, we have everything we use at the meeting. If I added one more computer at the meeting, this UPS wouldn't handle it. Now, what can you plug in and how do you do this? Okay, this is kind of like do what I say and not what I do. First of all, a UPS should be plugged in straight to the electrical outlet. This should not be plugged into a power strip. Power strip may or may not have a surge protector in it, but it could cause the UPS to malfunction. So this needs to be plugged in straight to power. If for some reason you cannot plug into straight power, we're an example of that. We use an extension cord. And this goes into the UPS. And I like to use extension cords that have lights in them, the LEDs, because that way I can tell if I've got signal without having to hunt and go find something to plug in. And I use the heaviest extension cord I can get for 15 amp. And keep in mind, this is 15 amp, a standard electrical outlet with, with a straight blade is 15 amp. If you go to a 20 amp, you've got that straight and you've got a turn blade. You can get a bigger UPS. But for this, I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. It's a UPS. It's a sine wave. It's not a true sine wave. If you want a true sine wave, you go from a $200 UPS to $600, $800, $1,200. But for bang for the buck, for what it is, it'll work with the standard power supplies, a PFC power supply, which is power factor correction. And we'll put a link up to another video. There's a gentleman that explains that beautifully on YouTube that you can take a look at. Now, as we look at the back of this, like I said, sacrificial devices on this side. Printer would go on this side. On this side where you have surge and UPS, that's where your computers go. So I'm going to unplug that. I've done the demonstration part. Now I'm going to spin this around so we can take a look at the front of it. Now what I like about it, the batteries are plugged in and they're ready to go. I don't have to pull the lid and uh, connect anything. I don't have to charge it. This is charged and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, zoom in on this a little bit so I can show you that LCD screen when I turn this on. Now when I turn this on, two beeps and it's on and then I can see the screen and I can read and see what the load is now right now it shows the input 123 volts it shows that there is a full charge and there's no there is no load on this UPS and then I can plug the other equipment into it now I have a power conditioner plugged in somewhere else in the room that shows my voltage right now is at 85 so even though this says it's 123 volts that's what it's supposed to be uh, everything that I have that's in a rack, all the racks have their own power conditioner. And all those power conditioners plug into this. And through the other devices, I plug everything into the back of this UPS. Uh, this is the heart of our system that runs everything we've got. But this is the largest one of the three. The one below this you can find at Costco. These are $215. And I want to share this with you. Now, this was part one. When we do part two, I'll install the software, we'll plug in the cable, and I'll show you just how easy it is to set it up and run it. And it'll do a self-test every once in a while just to make sure it's functioning properly. You should get three to five years out of one of these. Uh, I was using another brand that, uh, well, they didn't want to support their product. 
So I contacted these people, asked them a question, got my question answered. And uh, Joe and I talked about this probably about three years ago. And uh, I've been using the cyber power ever since then. And uh, I think it's a good product for the money. Now, if I want a true sine wave UPS, I can stick with cyber power. Or if I want to be able to have two of these UPSs plugged in together and go from one to the other, I can plug these two into a, an automatic transfer switch. So when one goes off, the other one would take over. That's something to think about. And there's other equipment that you can use, uh, power conditioners. We may get into some of that later as it relates to Builder Buy behind the scene. But for Builder Buy, I wanted to share with you about this UPS. Now to turn this UPS on, it's just as easy as you'll hear it power and I hold it just long enough to hear the two beeps. Let go of it and it's on and you'll see the screen. And I do the same thing in reverse to turn it off. Then it's off. And everything that's plugged into it shut down. Hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.